This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Two of the most successful companies of our age are SpaceX and Tesla, both of which built by Elon Musk. Both were started in the early 2000s, and both are technology startups that have a huge focus on engineering. But aside from them sharing Elon Musk, they share a very different fate. SpaceX and Tesla had a dramatically different year in 2018. While SpaceX is doing well with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, Tesla faced tremendous troubles financially and even struggled to survive, as Elon Musk admitted in a recent interview. Well, I mean, Tesla really faced a severe uh, thre threat of death uh, due to the Model 3 production ramp. Essentially, the company was bleeding money like crazy and, and just if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? We were yeah, within single-digit weeks. Truth be told, the situation at Tesla has gotten significantly better ever since its most successful third quarter profit. But here's the million dollar question. Why does it seem that building a reusable rocket is easier than building an electric car? Reality is much more complicated than we think. Yes, in terms of engineering, it does not make any sense that Elon had a harder time building a Tesla Model 3 than building SpaceX Falcon 9. But business is not just about engineering, you see. Almost every Tesla owner I've met loved the product, but this is not necessary for SpaceX. Clients of SpaceX does not have to love Falcon 9 to employ SpaceX services. This is the first factor that matters in the situation. Two companies face different forms of competitions, both at the industry level and at the customer level. On one side of the equation is an overconfident, stagnant industry, complacent about their competitive advantage, and never believed in the early 2010s that a private company could make a rocket as capable as theirs. The United Launch Alliance was literally given licenses for military launches and had a monopoly status for decades, supported by the United States government. But on the other side is this hyper-competitive private industry that has fought the German companies in the 50s and 60s and has fought the Japanese companies in the 70s and 80s. It has gone through the financial crisis in the late 2000s. General Motors even have to file for bankruptcy during that period. For better or for worse, the auto industry in the United States knows what competition is and what it takes to win the competition. Therefore, as a newcomer in these two industries, SpaceX and Tesla had to behave very differently. Competing in the rocket industry is relatively simpler. In terms of the engineering behind Falcon 9, it's as hard as it can be, but when it comes to business, as long as SpaceX is selling Falcon 9 at a cheaper cost, SpaceX will win the competition, at least in the commercial launch market. Its clients are cost-driven corporations. That's exactly what happened to SpaceX. Most of its clients are deep-pocketed telecommunication companies that care about cost more than anything. So once Falcon 9 was proven to be a cheaper and more reliable launcher, the competition was over. For Tesla, however, it's much more complicated. To start with, Tesla is not selling to corporations like SpaceX. Consumer tastes are much harder to please. On top of that, there are many interest groups lobbying against electrification of transportation. The oil industry, the car dealers industry, the ICE car industry, and even the car components industry. Electrification is a revolution. Everyone along the value chain is affected. For example, the new EVs will render half the ICE component supply chain obsolete simply because EVs don't use those components. This makes the problem a social problem that's beyond what this channel covers. But coming back to comparing SpaceX and Tesla's competitions, Tesla had much more powerful and respectable competitors and much pickier customers than SpaceX. However, competitions alone do not explain why 2018 was such a critical year for Tesla. To explain this, we need to understand an interesting factor that is often neglected. Timing. Timing is the single most important factor for any startups to succeed. If you're too early, the technology and the market is not ready. If you're too late, the market is already saturated. That's why blockchain-based startups blossomed in 2017, bike-sharing startups like Mobike was at full speed in 2016, same goes to crowdfunding in 2015 and social media disruption right after 2008 financial crisis. Ask yourself this question. 
If Tesla were to produce Model 3 in 2010, would it work? The answer is a definitive no. It's physically impossible to sell an electric car that's priced at $50,000 in 2010. At that time, battery alone would have costed Tesla over $50,000 per car. This is a physical fact, and no one can defy physics. Therefore, it takes time for market to mature, and it takes time for technology to mature. 2018 is a critical year for that reason. It was the right time for Tesla to start making mass-market Tesla Model 3 with a mature technology and a reasonable profit margin. For SpaceX, it was a different game. The technology and market were ready all along. It was the myth that no private company could make rockets as powerful as the government-supported firms that scared away previous private competitors. This myth was broken by SpaceX, not only proving itself to be able to make rockets more powerful at a fraction of the cost, it also proved the value of reusability. Once the myth was broken, NASA's funding came in and the rest was history. Additionally, Tesla did have a vulnerability that directly caused its turmoil in 2018. It has too much engineering in its genes. Tesla lacks a streamlined management team that could run the business smoothly. This is the reason why Tesla had production house and delivery house one after another. And this is also the reason why Elon Musk sleeps in the Gigafactory all the time. He at times is too hands-on with Tesla's daily operations, which made him the bottleneck of the company. He needs five to 10 really capable senior engineers running the factory for him. This is a blessing for Tesla when it needs to make great engineering products, but when it comes to ramping up productions for the mass market and managing the business, this is proven to be problematic. As for now, the problem seems to be contained and Model 3 production is increasing smoothly, but it does not cancel the fact that Tesla and SpaceX are in two different games. Too much focus on engineering and too little focus on achieving mass production would not do any good to Tesla. I think the team at Tesla has realized it and its recent performance reflected. it. So comparing Tesla with SpaceX speaks volumes. Not in the sense that I wanna to convey to you how different those companies are or why building electric cars should be harder than building reusable rockets, cause that's absurd but in realizing how similar Elon tries to run both companies. He keeps trying to run Tesla like SpaceX, but the thing about Tesla is it's not SpaceX and it never will be. Tesla already had enough engineering elements that produced brilliant products. What it needs more is business. And as much as I hate to say this, less engineering for Tesla right now probably wouldn't be the worst thing. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. Also, if you want to learn the technical details and engineering that goes behind SpaceX and Tesla, Brilliant.org is a great toolbox for that, which is also the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant offers many curated sequences of questions and practices that help you master all sorts of technical subjects. From classical mechanics to electricity and magnetism, both are essential knowledge for Tesla and SpaceX engineers. In addition, Brilliant's Community Wiki provides a system of knowledge that makes technical subjects accessible and easy to understand. Here's what I mean. It usually starts with a concept, but it always ends with examples and graphics that makes learning more fun. Go to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant today and sign up for free. First 200 people click on the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. By doing so, it also helps this channel. So a big thank you from me as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.